Welcome back, everyone, to Inside the Force. Dave Cottingham here with Cody Geiler. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good, man. And making his Inside the Force debut on our weekly show here is my co-host from the Mandalore podcast, Cyber Ren himself, Martin Donison. How are you, sir? Hello, guys. I am doing all right. How about you guys? Thanks for jumping on here. I know it's kind of last minute, you know? <laughs> <laughs> was, well he the backstory real quick is we were recording the other night and he's like yeah man if you want me to come on inside the force sometime i know casey's out ha you know taking care of his twins uh so it's funny because i i, I said because i know martin you know just to let everybody make sure everybody reminds it not only mandalor podcast is what you do but you do uh podcast for tomorrow's legends and you're talking star girl superman and lois all those so yeah. you're recording almost i feel like almost every night <laughs> <laughs> there, there's one point in time where it's four nights a week yeah, yeah exactly so wednesday is an open night for you so thanks for joining us yeah you made it five days yeah awesome this is great i mean i listen <laughs> i've been listening to you guys for a while so it's, it's cool to get to be on here and make make my debut as a guest i'm, I'm happy to be here Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so we are going to dive into some news, you know, some s small news topics. Uh, but of course, we're going to center on the Bad Batch episode two, uh, cut and run that came out this past Friday. Um, and then we got a fun little topic that we'll get into that's similar to what's happening with the Bad Batch, which is a continuation of the Clone Wars. And we're going to just kind of spitball on some ideas that maybe Lucasfilm can use from us. And actually develop some some animated s shows in the future that, of course, we would watch. So uh, we'll get into that <laughs> much a little later. But first, um, the news just broke today. Um, Star Wars Celebration has been announced that it has moved up the dates, not back, which is probably going to be uh, may many people's first guess. But since the pandemic is somewhat coming to an end, even though there is a lot of, you know, a lot of that's still going on, uh, but a lot of people have been getting vaccinated. So they have moved uh, celebration still in Anaheim from August of 2022 up to May of 2022. So a year from now, the Star Wars celebration will continue. Um, Cody, surprised by this move at all? Uh, I'm, I mean, I am surprised. I feel like in a year of, you know, looking back on 2020, everything was shifting back, right? Movies, uh, especially live events, things like that. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these uh, events going more digital and things like Comic-Con and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I was surprised. But uh, I, I was thinking about it. And doesn't isn't D23 also um, happening around the fall? Well, D23... Uh, was another one that that canceled um in 20 i think it was 2020 last year and they said that they were moving to 2022 but they had not released the dates yet for for when this so you're right it could be that they're going to do that in august because it is in anaheim all the time and then move celebration to uh to, to may so that's a good point yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking of. I was like, okay, if they have D23 the same year, maybe they're trying to space out some of the announcements and whatnot. And and I feel like it kind of makes sense to do it earlier. Looking at, you know, when we've got, how, you know, live action shows. We've got Kenobi, Andor, Mando Season 3. Book of Boba Fett will probably be out before this point. Right. You know, most likely it'll be, you know, done. Um, so you just have those shows and more animated shows, probably Bad Batch Season 2. So it does make sense to me to have a big event to kick off maybe a lot of those announcements earlier in the spring, as opposed to, you know, if you wait till August, some of these shows might already be, you know, in mm -hmm. the pipeline and, and releasing at that point. Now, Martin, you were actually going to try to make your way to your first celebration last year, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. The plan was to come down and, and hopefully get to meet you in person for the first time and, and hang with you guys. Yeah, and let you guys lead me around. <laughs> yes, that would yeah. have been in would have incredible. Been uh, which because because Anaheim is not that far from you. It's a lot shorter than going to Orlando. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, that's a two hour flight, I think. So. Yeah, see, that's great. Um, now the the big thing about this though, which is still in question, because you know when 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 celebration got canceled for 2020, uh, if you had a ticket, you had the option to hang on to your ticket. 
for the right. 2022 convention. Now, if you you also had the choice to re- get it refunded, um, a lot of people I feel like I've read a lot of people about half have refunded, half have held their tickets. But now, you know, the thing about it is, is if you if you knew at first that the the time was August. You might have made accommodations and plans for August. Well, now you've got to move it to May, which may cause people to not be able to go if they've already had something going on or they can't get you know, free in May. But right. there is no discussion yet, at least what I'm reading. I have not found any discussion on whether or not this is going to be a full capacity event. If this is going to be, if they're going to even open up new tickets. I mean, they could just have enough of the people that are holding tickets right now, if it's a limited capacity. So there's a big question mark still on how much this is going to be open to the public. So um, I'm like, Cody, you got any thoughts on what you, I mean, do you, I guess the ultimate question would at that point in time, would you even feel safe going a year from now? If it's full capacity. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a good question. Just, you know, being around that many people. I mean, I definitely haven't been in a situation like that yet. Um, You know, I just recently got vaccinated. You know, I know a lot of people are some people haven't yet and are in the process of it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, I I haven't really I haven't really been able to think a ton about it because the move just happened. Uh, Yeah. um, you know, I feel like if if vaccinations are out and they're effective and, you know, at that point, it may be even to where people are going to have to have, you know, second rounds or whatnot, you know, yeah. I, it'd be interesting to see, you know, what the world is like, you know, cause this is an event that people come from, yeah. not just the U S they come from outside the U S and whatnot. Um, yes. So I feel like it's a little bit of a wait and see kind of thing. You know, I wonder if it's going to be an event where they require people to wear masks and whatnot, you know, who knows where we'll be at that uh, time. Um, so, I mean, I would love to be able to go because I feel like that's going to be, uh, a, a time to, I mean, I thought a lot about when we went and saw, uh, in Chicago, we got the first sneak peek of Mando season yes. one, right? And that was before, like, we knew oh, anything man. about it. And they didn't release a trailer for that for a long time. No. Nope. And that was, a, it was a really fun trip. Besides, you know, besides that, for anybody who hasn't been, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's good when you can go and be with a group of people and just get to experience, you know, the fun and, and meet other people that all, you know, like and love Star Wars. Star Wars, so. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested. Uh, I think it's you know a little bit of a wait and see and 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 find out what the ticket situation is going to be like because I don't have a ticket from 2020. Yes, me neither. And this right. is good that you're actually on here, Martin, because you living outside of the country. Actually, you were texting me saying you guys can't even travel outside of the country right now. So what's no. what do you feel like is What's your comfort level of going a year from now, possibly? Well, it's it's just like Cody was saying, a year from now, we have no idea what the situation is going to be. You know, vaccinations, the effectiveness, all that kind of thing. I, I think if they were to have it right now, I'd be a little worried about going because that, that if it's full capacity, that's thousands of people and it's definitely not safe. So a year from now, I, I think I'd probably feel okay once we get results of, you know, what's happening in the world and everything mm-hmm. seems to be slowly clearing out, I would probably feel okay. It's for, for Canadians to try to get down there right now, it's really difficult. We're not even allowed to leave the country unless yeah. it's some specific reason. And when you do, you have to quarantine for two weeks once you get in the country and the government wants you to stay in a, in a quarantine COVID specific hotel. And so not only taking your holiday time, but when you get back to your own country, you got to take more holiday time to cover the quarantine period and it's wow. all at your own cost. So it, it's right now traveling is out of the question. And I, I'm, I am glad things aren't happening because like you said, I, I, to come down there and spend Star Wars celebration with you guys. I, I mean, I've, I've been wanting to see that thing for years because I yes. know it's like going to Comic-Con. I've, I've been to San Diego for Comic-Con and I mean, a Star Wars version of that. <laughs> it, I just, I, I can't imagine I would be in, in complete, you know, <laughs> little, little kid excitement. I just, yeah, I wouldn't be able to contain absolutely. myself. So. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's a good point. And, and both of you brought that up because celebration does definitely attract people from all over the world. It isn't just, you know, people in yeah. America or even Canada or, or Mexico. It's you have a lot of Europeans that come over um, from the UK, from France, from Germany, all kinds of places. So it will be interesting yeah. 
because I feel like the move has to be reflective of what they expect the situation to be at that point, how the safeness of it, because why not give yourself those few months to still have it in August, you know? So, so they may know something that we don't know. And, and California has been the one that's, you know, really been locked down for a long time and they're starting to really open up. Disneyland just opened up, you know, a few weeks ago. So things are getting better there. So we'll hope now real quick on yeah. the, go back to what you said, Cody, on the, you know, getting away from the dangerous part of it, but the actual content that could be at celebration, you know, I've gone to celebration and I keep talking about it here. I've gone to celebration ever since 2005 and I've been to every celebration since. And the one thing about it is throughout the weekend, you pretty much could look at the agendas and pick really truly pick the things you want to see and be able to see them. If you see a panel that is an interview with Mark Hamill and you want to go to it, you probably can go to it because it doesn't really interfere with something else that's happening. You know, Cody, when we went and saw the Mandalorian, that, that was pretty much the only thing at that time that you really want to see. Right. At some point, don't you think that you were going to go to one of these celebrations and you're going to have to really choose if you want to go see the, the sneak peek of Andor or the sneak peek of the next Star Wars movie, because those, at some point these things are going to happen. There's going to be so much coming out. There's no way they could, you know, space enough time because you have to wait in line for a lot of this stuff. Now they do have the virtual queuing, which is really good. Um, but you know, there was times when we did a virtual queue and I still didn't get in. So, I don't know. Do you think that we're going to have that issue? Now, maybe not this celebration, but maybe a couple of years from now. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think back to so uh, Chicago last celebration we went to. You know, you had episode nine Mando. Um, they had was Jedi Fallen the Order. Jedi Fallen Order, big video game. But the other like large panel, I guess they had like a Galaxy's Edge one. Yes, and then um, was Clone Wars season seven? Possi- I think it was maybe announced around there, or they had yes, some kind the of trailer, trailer for that. Yes. The trailer. So that was kind of a big panel. Um, so that really filled out a weekend, right? You think about mm-hmm. you know, you've got maybe four days, you know, if they do a Friday to Sunday or, or you know, like a, I think it was like a Thursday to Sunday last Thursday time. to Sunday. Yep. Um, so, you know, it, if they get to the point where you've got more than three or four shows, you know, I don't know if they're going to do like because it, traditionally it's always been like a one big panel in the morning and then break out, you know, publishing yes. panels, actor panels like m- throughout the day, afternoon and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, maybe they would have to go to like a, you know, morning and a prime time evening mm-hmm. panel or something mm-hmm. to be able to showcase, you know, Kenobi and Andor and whatnot. Um, Cause you know, it, once, once we get to the point where they have movies again, you know, mm-hmm. we're looking at, you know, 2023, you're still going to have these Disney plus shows, you know, in their second, third or whatever seasons there are. Yes. Um, so I could definitely see it getting to the point where you might have to pick and choose. Now, the interesting thing about um, Chicago, and it may have just been because of the capacity of the space they actually had a lottery system to get into some of these. That's channels. right. That's right. So luckily, yep. like we got into some, but then there's some where, you know, you could watch it on a virtual stage. And that's kind of the beauty of them doing it where you have the live stream is like, you know, if you're not able to go, you can still tune in. You might not get to see exclusive footage, but, you know, if you don't get into a panel, you can still at least check out what's going on because there is so much there that you can't go to every single panel, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, they could do, because I don't know if you guys have been to San Diego Comic-Con, what San Diego mm-hmm. does is that the, for all the major events that they want to um, promote, they have it all in the same room. And basically, you line up first thing in the morning, you get in that one room, and you're in that room for the entire day because they're back yep. to back to back. Hall so H, they, right? Yeah. So they could do something like that. But you guys mentioned virtual, too. If, if you remember, when this whole COVID thing first started, there were still some Comic-Cons trickling through all of... Canada and the United States that, and they didn't know how to handle it. But so they went fully virtual Yep. and there, there was no event that you would go to, you know, any, an event center for you just, everybody would buy their ticket and then tune in online and watch, pick whatever video stream you wanted to watch. Yep. So they, that's an option as well. If they're still worried a year from now about numbers and, and too many people in one space, they could still sell tickets for that. You just, you just buy your pass and then you can tune in and watch all of them online. I don't think I don't think they'll go that route though. I just think the way yeah. celebration is, it's 
man, it is such an in-person experience because there's yeah. so much artwork and events going on in person events that are going on that that are driven usually by the fan base the community you know there's yeah. so much of that going on that I, it'd be hard for them to, to top that and just have a, a ver- now and, and i think you know some of these some of these are streamed either later or not live i don't know they have been streaming some of the content uh lately in the past mm-hmm. couple of celebrations but yeah, the main, Star Wars show usually does a stream for like the, the episode nine panel had a stream. That's right. You know, and yep. they still have the trailer on that because that trailer is coming out on YouTube the minute yeah. after the panel happens. You know, there's nothing exactly, exactly. necessarily there. Yeah, but you are right. The, I mean, even the Comic Cons, it, 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 it's all about being there in person because the, the energy that's there when you're yeah. with fellow fans that just love it as much as you do, that, that experience you cannot translate over streaming you just can't and it's, you can't it, yeah i mean it, so they would have to figure it out they would have to figure out a way to make it work we're still safe and viable and and have that experience for everybody mm-hmm. and that might make it harder to get tickets to get into if they do limit the numbers yes very very much so and i think the you know i think the virtual queue or the lottery like you said case uh, cody because they're they had both they had a they had a lottery system for the main events and then they had a virtual queue for all the other uh, panels. So you didn't have to wait in line. You could wait in line virtually and go to your, and then you, you would show up at a certain time. And, but again, I got, it backfired me on one, one time for one of those publishing panels because I was in the virtual queue showed up, but then I was at the end of it. So when they filled the room up, they still lit, would let me in. So I remember that. Yeah. There's always some little like, you know, wait, waiting overnight in line, you know, kind of yeah. thing. But some of it's about, you know, it's the journey. It's it not is necessarily the journey. about making it in the room. <laughs> so that's right. That's I remember right. that for the episode eight panel, but uh, yeah. yeah, the road trip. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> ticket reef. If you, if you have a ticket, and you want to refund it still, you have until June 11th of this year to refund your ticket. So May 26th to the 29th, 2022 is when Star Wars Celebration is happening now in Anaheim. So it is a four day, uh, four day convention there in Anaheim. So in Anaheim, honestly, is was one of the best times I've had. We had, it was in 2015 when they had it there. Fantastic uh, place, fantastic weather. Um, it was in April then, so this is a, a month later. So weather would be obviously weather in California is always good. So, so there's there's that. Stay, you know, obviously StarWars.com, StarWarsCelebration.com. You can keep following that for updates on what to do with tickets there. Okay, so yeah. let's talk about. Uh, oh, did you say Dart something, Martin? I disagree oh. with you. That's all. Yep. <laughs> All right, so this past Friday, episode two dropped for the Bad Batch, and it was called Cut yeah. and Run. Uh, we got so we got two episodes in one week. Uh, third episode would be out this Friday. Uh, of course, if you want some major in-depth discussion about this episode, go to the Mandalore podcast. Martin and I really deep dive into these episodes, but. On this, we we do we, we do and uh, but this let's talk about uh, just overall reviews, Cody. Um, since we haven't heard your review yet, what was your thoughts on the second episode of the Bad Batch? Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought it was interesting. I, the, the my speculation was right because they had released the episode title before, you know, cut and run. And Dave, you and I, we might have talked off air about it. Yes, that we did. Cut Laquay was going to make an appearance, um, so that was. <laughs> That was cool to see a, a kind of a deep cut from like season two of the Clone Wars mm-hmm. uh, for for Clone Wars fans out there. Um, no, but I thought it was interesting. You know, definitely. You know, it's always hard. You come off of a big premiere, going into an episode right after that. You know, a seventy five minute premiere like what they did for the Bad Batch. You know, it's it's a it's a bit more of a maybe a slower pace. You know, a little bit more character uh, develop developing going on uh you know i thought it was uh cool what they do with omega you know she has a very ray type moment right never been off of camino right you know, ray mm-hmm. never been off of jakku and then she sees all this green omega has a similar you know she she gets you know off the ship and it's like oh what is this dirt you know, it's, just, it's wild to think that you know you know she hasn't experienced that but to get to see 
this show and a lot of these stories through a child's eyes, I think really helps put us back into the, you know, being a little kid and being a fan again, kind of, you know, and all those things that George kind of started with star Wars and that Filoni, uh, you know, still, uh, tries to, um, inject into all of these shows and you know is that idea of hopefulness Mm -hmm. um so i felt like that was really interesting and and i really like how they're developing um hunter and omega you know it felt like cut's involvement was to basically be like hey omega is not a soldier you need to learn how to like basically like be a dad Dad, yes it's kind of like how he was you know talking to him you know without saying so many words so i thought that part of it the familial aspect was a really good choice for the second episode to continue that character development between some of the bad batch members um you know so i think i liked this episode a lot you know i think it was good Uh, you know i don't think it necessarily is you know i don't know if i'd rate it out of like 10 or whatever where i'd put it yet but, you know, if the, the premiere was pretty high for me, this one is, you know, it's under it, but it's not like it was under it by a lot. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, one of the things that it, I, I love that aspect, the, the Ray comparison, because I didn't really think about it that way, because I think I was always more or less worried about uh, I was worried about really the next step for the Bad Batch and you know, with the consequences of Crosshair, you know, what happened with him, because we didn't see him in this episode. So which I thought was a little surprising. I thought at least we'd get a scene or two to kind of figure out what his plan is to go after them in a sense, you know. Um, so I was actually I feel like I was more focused on that than Omega's, you know, journey a little bit. And uh, that's interesting about that, because. I think one of the, you know, and I picked this Martin as one of my, as my favorite scene in our podcast is I love that scene where Hunter's telling her to go yeah. with cut in that family. Right. I thought yeah. that was so powerful and it took me watching it a couple times to really feel that emotion from that. Because after the first time, to be honest, I wasn't that impressed with this episode. Cause again, I thought it, I thought it really kind of was a step back even though I knew it wouldn't be as good as the premiere, but, but I, it, it kind of went in a different direction than I thought. So, um, but after watching it a couple more times, I was, I really feel like you said that family aspect of it. So um, I thought, I thought in the end it was, it was a good follow up, and um, uh, I'm interested again, still to see how the crosshair thing is gonna, is gonna factor in. So Martin, where, you know, tell our audience where, where you were overall with this episode. Well, I I think I probably fell in love with it faster than you did because right off the the first watch, I just I was surprised that this was the direction they were going to go in, and it just it was just beautiful to me. It was that the the Omega and Hunter relationship that just suddenly blossomed, and and we see how much she looks up to him, and you know she's idolized him and, and his team for a while now. Now she has a chance to be with him because she sees herself in them. They're they're both they're all outcasts. And mm-hmm. she has nobody to connect to. I mean, the Kaminoans, are, they're basically just her teachers. And I, I don't think they really share any emotion with her. So she has a chance to to connect with this team and, and be part of something. And I think that's why she's so excited. And I just found that very endearing. And to see, I, I think what this episode did is it gave us something for our team to become to to see their stories develop because when you think about it they're they're a team of five grunts basically enhanced grunts yes but how much story can you have for a bunch of military guys running around the galaxy I, I, like i can't i couldn't see a lot of depth happening for them being on the run but now you throw in a a child who is also enhanced and they have to protect her and take care of her now we get to see how each individual character interacts with her and i, I like that they showed Wrecker, for instance, you know, when, when those, the, when, um, uh, cuts kids come and run and they go, uncle, uncle Wrecker. And yeah. it, like, you did not see that coming. And all of yeah. a sudden it opens the doors for this team to suddenly have this depth of personality. And, mm-hmm. and I really like mm-hmm. that it went in that direction for them. And, and it's going to, it's going to allow us to see each character grow. And I, you know, when we talked about on our, on our show, is, is this similar to Grogu and, and Din from, the Mandalorian, and I, I can see a lot of people thinking that, but 
these are different characters and the story is different and the background is different. So I, I it, with Omega being roughly around 12 years old, I think we're going to have a lot more opportunity for her to actually help the team because we, she wants to help the team all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, what can I, what can I do to help? You know what? And, and I like that aspect of her. So yeah, I was, I was really surprised and, and pleasantly so right from the start. Well, that, and that was the question I was going to throw to you, Cody, was what do you think about, you know, the, the, the reaction out there a little bit about this being too similar to the Mandalorian? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely there. Um, you know, I think you kind of have to give the story a chance to unfold, right? I mean, you know, you think back to Mandalorian, you know, we got into episode two and we found out that the Grogu was force sensitive, you know, I mean, talk about like a way to follow up or premiere like that was maybe that's why when I think about, you know, this episode two, I was kind of maybe hoping, I guess I I know they're not going to reveal all the cards, but I thought maybe they would reveal a bit more about Omega and I just Mm. tend to lean towards she's probably force sensitive. So I think if they go that route, it is going to feel very similar. You know, you've got this, you know, um, tough, you know, hunter sort of character that's a lot like Mando. But the fact that there is this team, you know, it's not just a lone Mandalorian who has to figure out how to protect a baby who can't really interact with him. You know, that's the thing is Grogu couldn't grow up. He physically couldn't grow up fast because he (laughs) grows slowly. Um, Omega may be forced to grow up much quicker than she normally would have, right? We see moments in this where she's getting to be a kid maybe for the first time. But I'm sure they're going to be put in circumstances. And it's already kind of shown that she will probably have to learn how to, to survive and grow up. So that interaction of Omega being actually able to um, connect and, and be, you know, a character that is more than just sort of like a cute, uh, as much as I love Grogu, don't get me wrong, just a cute figure for selling toys. <laughs> I think Omega is going to have a little bit more involvement in her story. Yeah. 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 yeah not sure you're going to, not sure you're going to see an Omega character on Martin's desk behind him. Here soon. <laughs> oh, who knows? But here's an interesting thought. Uh, Martin uh, is, you know, as a fan of the show, are you are you so invested now into the the the, the Hunter uh, Omega storyline and relationship that are you even are you even worried now at all about them and their uh, their thought process or reaction to what's going to happen with Crosshair? I mean, is that is that storyline even? Because I feel like in this, especially this episode, that truly took a step back. You know, uh, right. it's, they kind of right. pushed that side to the side and focused on this. I mean, are, how how I don't know how much involved are you actually in caring about what happens across it? I I don't think that story. It, yes, it took a backseat to this episode, but I think this episode they needed to do it to show us what Omega is going to be in the show, and that you know she's going to be able to be join the team, maybe part of the team. I think Hunter was worried. We saw him, you know, continually worried that. The threat is out there, and I, so I think we're going to come back to that. That Crosshair is going to be after them. He might be their antagonist for a few episodes, but we don't know what's happening to him either. I mean, they just reprogrammed his chip, and you know, we're, so I think he's going to be in a state of of confusion and trying to figure things out. Well, what's what's his job? What's his task now? Am I tasked to chase my old team down? Which is what I'm guessing is going to happen. So I don't. I'm interested. I think that's going to be something we need to be concerned with. He'll, he'll, we'll probably have an episode where he's coming after them and the team. Cause uh, imagine the emotional repercussions for a team now, like one of their own is hunting them down now. Yes. We haven't, we haven't seen them deal with that yet. And I think that's coming. This was just an episode to get Omega involved. And now that we know she's part of the team, she's going to be with them. Now the journey's going to, going to take off. Like, what do we do now? Crosshair's after us. Are we going to help him? Are we going to run from him? I, I think that's what's going to come next. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Cody? Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I, I tend to agree with you. And I think when I was wrapped up in the story, I wasn't thinking about it while watching. But when you mention it, you know, I, I kind of did expect, you know, typical Star Wars fashion where you kind of cut away, yep. you know, back at the ranch or over at the Empire. You know, this is what they're kind of up to. You know, who is giving Crosshair his orders, you know? 
track down, you know, you need to go track these guys down. You know, is it another yeah. clone? Is it Tark? You know, Tarkin obviously was heavily involved. So I, I kind of expect a scene like that coming soon, you know, to where that tension will build and continue to grow as the Bad Batch are off, you know, trying to lay low. He's going to be, you know, hot on their trail, you know, so to speak. So, yep. uh, but yeah, I thought it was a little strange that we didn't really get any of the villain uh, perspective because I feel like Clone Wars always did a lot of sort of cutting around at least in earlier seasons oh, yeah. through the cast of characters. Now as we kind of got later and later, you know, specific arcs would focus on you know only this uh, squad of clones or just Ahsoka and Anakin or Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it seems like this show is much more about the Bad Batch characters, yep. and we're mostly going to experience it through their eyes. That's right. Um, but I, I really do want to see, like, I want to see some of the inner workings of how the Empire is is changing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. What are they going to do to the rest of those clones on Kamino? Because Tarkin clearly has a disdain, uh, but they have a lot of clones, and they're going to need them right now yes. for their army and to impose their will. But, you know, something's going to, something unfortunate is probably going to happen there. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I, I'm with you because I think, I was totally expecting, especially with, especially when this firefight broke out on uh, Salukamai, that somebody was going to radio somebody back at Kamido and was like, "Hey, the bad bat or the you know the the bad bats, they're here or whatever," you know. And you could see where Crosshair is getting ready to load up and go after him or something like that, right? I I tended to believe that that something like that was going to happen, so I was really surprised that it didn't. Um, now one thing about it, I hope they do, which, you know, uh, this is, and this stems back from a little bit about our conversation. Um, in fact, we, I just put out a, uh, beyond the saga with Hannah about the Canaan comic that tells a different story of the order 66, right? Um, right. this story for Canaan came out in 2015 and obviously the premiere kind of changed and retconned a little bit of what happened there but even in that issue you know commander gray who is now captain gray in the in the show um even in that book they show that he has some memory still of of caleb and the jedi and i that i truly hope that some some part of that is 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 present with with crosshair i cannot believe that he ultimately just hates his old crew the bad batch right i mean i think that those guys are truly going to you know they're portrayed as brothers but i think they're you're even going to see them become more of a band of brothers as this series goes on and i I do think that inhibitor chip is going to really play into it i think we were introduced to it more you know, uh, introduced to it in episode one to really foreshadow that that is going to be something of an issue with Crosshair. And I hope yeah. that it ends up being that, that conflict. Um, I don't know. Do you think Martin that that's that it's safe to say that that something like that could happen? Yeah. Cause I mean, he really is the only one that got affected by it uh, and yeah. they had, they had to go and like supercharge it to get it to work again on him. So that may lead to something happening. The chip may fritz out. It might have some problems and he might, you know, we might see him having almost like a schizophrenic kind of reaction. He might be thinking one thing and then suddenly change to the next. Like, I'm going to hunt these guys down. Wait a sec. You're my brothers, oh, but I'm going to kill you anyway. And it, mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll, right. we'll have to see, or like, like we mentioned in our show, I mean, it wouldn't it be surprising if they decide like the bad batch is a team of five. What if they decide crosshair is the one that we're going to lose? that the our team is going to have to put him down basically he, yeah. he is relentless in his pursuit of them and they have no choice but to kill one of their own and i think that would be an emotional beat that really hits hard or even the flip side that he ends up killing one of them yeah um that would even be a big trigger for that i don't know cody what thoughts on that at all yeah, I mean, I think that's a that's a really good point you just made. That emotional moment of you know, imagine somebody like Hunter or or whoever on the team is put in a position where they they can, you know, take out Crosshair, but are they 
do they, you know, obviously they wouldn't want to do it, but will, when it comes down to it, will they actually do it? You know? Right. And I think that's a great moment that everybody's going to be kind of on pins and needles to see, you know, yeah. it, it probably would be more interesting to see it from that vantage point of one of the bad batch has crosshair, you know, beaten, but are they going to let him live? Uh, and, and I kind of hope that they'll, uh, continue this thread from you know obviously they they name dropped Rex in this episode. Uh, you kind of go back to Fives's arc, um, you know, f- with the chip sort of malfunctioning in the Clone Wars, um, and you see where Echo is in this. You know, there's a lot of of breadcrumbs that lead you to think that they might be trying to figure out how to save other clones, save as many clones as possible, kind of thing. Um, so I kind of hope you know a lot of star wars stories are you know eventually about redemption so whether or not crosshair was actively choosing to follow the order the chip was somewhat working and then obviously now he's not giving getting a choice i think it would be cool to see them at least make an attempt to bring him back and you know maybe that choice will be up to him at the end because right now he doesn't have a choice. You know, like you said, he just got his chip supercharged in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much yeah. so. Yep. Well, season uh, the season continues this Friday with episode three. I was trying to look it up because I could have swore that they did release a title, a title for it, it, but I do not see it. Um, I do see a quick one line for it, which is the batch gets stuck on a desolate moon. So I don't know any any quick uh, predictions, Cody, on where we go in this episode three. Yeah, I saw that description, and you know, uh, immediately, you know, I'm the Star Wars fan that's like getting on, you know, googling <laughs> Star Wars Desolate Moon, you know, going to the Wikipedia. Uh, I came up empty, unfortunately. Uh, there's a lot of moons in Star Wars. So. Yes, there are. Um, (laughs) no, I mean, I, I really don't, you know, last episode, I felt like it was kind of making a little bit of a tongue in cheek, you know, with the cut reference. And, uh, I'd seen that somebody else had noticed that Hunter was wearing similar clothing to cut Laquay. So, um, yeah, Hmm. I I really don't know where they're going with it, but I, I kind of assume a, a typical trope they've done in Mando and a lot of other Star Wars things is, their ship will probably malfunction because even the best ships in Star Wars seem to have <laughs> problems and break down and they'll end up somewhere where they don't want to be with a ship that's broken down and they'll need help to get out of that situation. Actually, and actually it's called replacements. I just found it. So right. Martin, any predictions on what we're going to see? <laughs> replacements. I mean, what is that ship parts? Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they could, like you said, be throwing us way off course because they do like to do that. They might like to lead you in one direction and then totally tell us it's something else. So, I mean, on a desolate moon, like you said, there's so many moons in Star Wars. So, the moon of which planet? Because yeah. so many Star Wars planets have fully livable moons around them. So, I mean, maybe, maybe that's a hint right there. It's a moon of a well known planet. And they couldn't quite make it to the planet. They had to crash on the moon. And <laughs> I, I, that's as much like, uh, yeah, I mean, it, like you said, it could be a, a broken ship story. And, and you know, maybe, I don't the replacements, may, I, it makes me think of a football movie with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> right. That's a good it's movie. all backup. So <laughs> maybe it has something to do with clones. Maybe there, there's some, some renegade clones out there that avoided the, the Order 66. I don't know. Yeah, it's some. I don't know if it's too soon that we're going to get Rex. Um, I mean, they they mentioned him, and we've seen him in the in the trailer. So, you know, I don't know if it's too soon, yeah. but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if if it's Rex that we we talk about and you know replacements. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think it'd be too soon to think about the replacements of the clones. You know, with stormtroopers. Uh, I think that's a longer, yeah. much longer process, but I think so. But we'll see. Um, I don't know. Episode three debuts Friday at uh, midnight West Coast time, <laughs> three a.m. <laughs> here on the East Coast, and one a.m. where you're at, Martin. So, yeah. Uh, if anybody stays up, you can stay up and catch that. I will try to watch it in the morning when I wake up, like I normally do. Um, and I like how these episodes are longer than the normal 22 minute Clone Wars episodes, you know, so far. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think they'll be. I think they'll be longer. I don't think I see any run times yet on that, but I'm sure that that'll, that'll come out probably tomorrow. Okay, uh, just a quick bit of news uh, that I wanted to mention before we get into our topic. Um, you and McGregor did a quick uh, interview with uh, Jimmy Kimmel the other day, and of course, Jimmy oh. had to talk about the Obi-Wan series that he is filming right now. And of course, you know, yeah. he had his beard and everything. And uh, the only thing I wanted to kind of highlight was that he, he was asked about filming any special scenes. And he said he had filmed a special scene on May the 4th. So, and it was with somebody that he had not done a, done his acting scenes with. Um, so of course, mm. speculation is running rampant out there. Cody, What's your speculation on what he did that day? <laughs> I mean, I've got like the hopeful, like fan speculation, and then I have like the realist approach. <laughs> so I'll give you both of them. So my hopeful speculation is, you know, there's a young kid that they cast as a young ten year old Luke Skywalker. Wow. Uh, yeah. And he gets yeah. to shoot a scene with him on May the fourth, and it's gonna be great. Uh, then the realist side of me is, you know, I heard him in the interview and he says that it was um, somebody that was special to him. I feel like he said that specifically. Right. Oh. And then that's where, um, you know, the interview he followed up to say, you know, have you been in a scene with this person before? And he said no. So it could just be like a family member was an extra mm -hmm. and it was just fun for him to get to experience it. And like, we're yeah. not even going to really notice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anything, Martin, yeah. any thoughts there? Well, and that's, that's the thing with these guys. They like to lead you off the path. So I, whether he meant anything by it, it's somebody special to him as an actor, or is it someone special to the character of Obi-Wan? And that, that could be anything like, like, like we speculated, it, he might have a love interest, somebody that challenges his, his, you know, Jedi ways where he might want to start to care for somebody. Maybe it was a scene with that person. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I yeah, but, I'm. I, I mean, right when he said it, obviously I was thinking, oh, he filmed with we, he filmed with Hayden. You know, the the him and Hayden did a scene, too. but he's done many scenes with Hayden. So, uh, yeah. so I'm trying to think. Uh, but it can't be with, you know, uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru, possibly, uh, because I yeah. think there was. I think. I mean, I, I know they did that scene at the end of Episode Three, but I've also read articles that said that those were actually shot at different times because you know um joel egerton and i can't remember her name that played baru but you know they were in episode two and they shot that scene when they were on set for episode two they didn't go back and shoot that at episode three so ewan shot his part after episode three and they kind of combined the two scenes right so mm -hmm. i don't okay. think he actually did any scenes with joel egerton so maybe he's talking about uncle owen right so that would be pretty cool <laughs> that would be that would be cool yeah that's kind of where my mind went but you know but he looks yeah. he looks great uh he said the outfit's a little different but it was get, it was cool getting back into it and I cannot. That is by far, you know, on the top of my list of series right now that's coming. Man, I cannot mm -hmm. wait for. I cannot wait for Obi One. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into our topic here. But right before then, I do want to mention that uh, in the comic world right now, um, today dropped or was it last? Sorry, I think it was last week. Last week dropped uh, the comic series War of the Bounty Hunters. So oh, cool. it's a big crossover that's happening between War of the Bounty Hunters, which is they call it the Alpha, uh, the Alpha, uh, um, the Alpha comic that came out last week. It's continuing in Star Wars and Vader and Bounty Hunters and Afra. It's a month long crossover. It's a really big event. If you guys are really into it, I, I would I would suggest going to. I started reading the Alpha issue really good so far it actually takes place literally right after episode five when boba fett has taken han and carbonite oh wow and is heading to trying to head to java and of course he runs into all kinds of problems which is what yeah. the series is kind of following so it's pretty neat um cool. so if you guys i'll have those issues if you guys want to want to read up on those 
Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, all <laughs> kinds of releases coming out this month uh, around that. And then, of course, in your novels, the next big novel I feel like is coming out is The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. That's coming out June 29th. Out of the Shadows, July, July 27th. Both of those are High Republic era novels, as well as Ronin, which comes out October 12th. And then you've got Queen's Hope, November 2nd, which is the third book of the E.K. Johnson series around Padme Abadala. And then you've got Thrawn Ascendancy, Lesser Evil, that third book in that trilogy coming out November 16th. So lots of lots of Star Wars content still rolling out. Okay, so this little topic that we're going to talk about a little bit, which I thought was pretty neat because I, I was thinking about it the other day that that literally the Bad Batch is a continuation, if not a, a, the next season of the Clone Wars. Um, but it's not the Clone Wars because it is about a different group of characters, the Bad Batch, ones that we right. were introduced to a little bit in the, in season seven in a four episode arc there. But it just got me thinking, you know, if if Disney plus or Lucasfilm were thinking about doing another animated series that would possibly continue another, another storyline, for example, from a film, what film would you want to see continued on maybe an animated series, either around the same main characters or possibly some secondary characters uh, around that era? Um, I'll throw one out there just to get the conversation started because I was, I, I, because of course I was trying to think of every era that we've seen the, the Skywalker films. Uh, the one that I would think right away is kind of an easy one to think about, but you know, there's that 10 year gap between episode one, and episode two. So I would think after episode one, of course I'm a big fan of the Jedi. Everybody knows that. I just think there's so many stories there that you can tell around a, a masters and, a, and, and Padawans. And I would probably dive more into well, cause what, one thing we haven't fully seen, we've only seen the, the high council, the 12 members of the high council when they're in session, we haven't actually seen them. What do they do as far as their duties beyond that's that council session, right? So you, you, you've seen Yoda leave the council and go to Kashyyyk during the Clone Wars, right? Because he was helping there. You've seen Mace in the Clone Wars leave and go and, and to planets and stuff like that. But during normal non-war type time era, right? Which is after episode one, you know, there's, there's obviously the Separatist movement starts at some point, but it's still years from there. But, you know, these... But Master Depa Balaba, she's on the council in episode one, right? I don't think she has um, Caleb at that point yet. Uh, but, you know, who is her Padawan and do they have Padawans? And I just would love to see some storylines with some of those some of those masters, like Kiata Mundi or Plo Koon or somebody that when it goes beyond that. I think that's an easy series to do because you can do so many different conflicts and introduce so many different villains um, but I would, I would say something like that would be something I would watch. So I you, dig that. Where, where would you I, go? Well, I, I just want to follow yeah. up on that real quick. Cause I, I dig it. And I feel like you should just call it master and apprentice, you know, <laughs> take the title of the book. <laughs> totally. You can apply nice. it to that era. Um, <laughs> and there's even the Obi-Wan Anakin comic. You can kind of adapt parts of that. Yes. I think that was a great comic, um, kind of fills in some of those gaps, but I feel like that relationship, right. You get the the voices who did uh you know the animated mm -hmm. um, anakin you know matt lanter and uh james arnold yeah. tainer for obi-wan uh you know i feel like that would be a great uh series already i mean you you kind of when you see anakin and obi-wan in the elevator in episode two in the beginning you kind of get the sense of they've been on these adventures together yes but we've never seen it so that's definitely a gap in the timeline and that's interesting you say that because you know matt lanter has been rumored to say that he is doing something with anakin again so yeah man, if they yeah. did an anakin obi-wan series after episode one oh my gosh i'd be all in on that that'd be <laughs> killer no i dig that a lot i mean I, so i'll tell you where my mind first went and I, I have another potential one uh if we if we get to talking about it but 
it, it feels like a bit of an easy one. I think we've talked about this era already, but you know, basically after episode six and where I would go with it, you know, a lot of people would probably go here as I was a huge fan of the Jedi Academy, uh, video game that came out, you know, you always wanted to see what happened, you know, when, you know, this is sort of the non, you know, non-canon version, obviously at that time, but what does Luke do when he starts his Academy and Luke would obviously be a character, but I wouldn't make him, you know, the main character, so to speak, you know, there's a hard, it's going to be hard to have a lot of threats in this timeline, you know, because the, the first order doesn't come around until a lot closer to uh, episode seven. Mm-hmm a little bit of that in resistance, but I would focus it much like how some of the clone wars arcs had the, the gathering, you know, those Padawans yeah. in the rise of Kylo Ren comic, you know, there's that scene where some of the Padawans come back mm-hmm. from who knows where they've been in a ship, just, you know, f- three or four Padawans together off on some mission. And that's when they encounter Ben. What do they do when they're out there on those missions? You know, kind of a similar yeah. thing to what you were getting but there's a lot less, you know, Jedi masters during this timeline. Uh, but then you could always, you know, cut around the galaxy, right? You can see what Han's up to, you know, is he in that racing sort of scene that they talk about in, mm-hmm. in some of the books, or is, you know, he's starting to get back into smuggling. You can go over to Leia and see what she's up to as she's, you know, potentially even starting this uh, resistance and get a little of the political aspect. So you can kind of cut around a little bit. I think the main problem in that timeline is, is, you know, uh, similarly to episode one is like, what is the threat that we can have? That's as big as, you know, the first order, but before the first order. So they, they you definitely have to introduce and, and invent some kind of uh, villain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Martin, what have you been thinking about? Well, you, you kind of just stole a bit of my thunder. That, that's the same time period I, I originally went to. So just to just to add to that, I think for me, it would be to follow Luke because he had just, I mean, between even between Empire and Return of the Jedi, we missed that transition of how he became almost a full-on Jedi. So afterward, I would like to follow his story. I would like to see where he goes. Because I mean, there's all this talk about Sebastian Stan. Could he play him? And could we get a live action series with the younger Luke, which I would be up for too. But if we don't get that, I would want the, the continuation because there, there's a 30 year gap between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. That's a lot of time to tell stories. I, I'd love to see. We got a hint of it in the movies of Luke training Leia. Let's expand on that. Let's see that story, the mm-hmm. brother and sister relationship, because it was so touching. I mean, that we that scene when he leans over and kisses her on the forehead breaks my heart i i love that and i want to see that relationship develop because they just found out that they're brother and sister well let's see the growth of that would and so i mean that that's a big part that i would i would love to see but if if i jump ahead in timeline let's go to just a few years before force awakens because i love those characters i let's let's find out what poe was doing how did he become the best pilot in the galaxy mm-hmm. but let's find out his story let's let's introduce those because they kind of just got thrown at us with force awakens here's your new guys but let's let's get a bit of an origin story and a bit of introduction from them from a few years before i think that would be cool as well and develop it to catch us up to you know this is how we got to force awakens so there is a there is a big comic series of poe dameron leading up to episode seven which i oh, will send there? you if you want to see all of that so send it all to me <laughs> yeah so that's uh, that's interesting you say that because a little bit of that is in there um and it's interesting about the luke thing because i do think that that is uh i definitely think that that is a story that has to be told um uh, i think a lot of people are just questioning what's happening that i'll piggyback on that and say my other thought went there as well but it didn't go on the Luke side, mine went on the Leia side and how the formation of the new Republic was happening because we, you know, we we're even five years, we're seeing five years later with the Mandalorian and we still right. haven't necessarily seen how the government actually is established at that. We haven't been no, nowhere near any core worlds. You know, we're only in the outer rim um, with the Mandalorian. So, we still haven't seen is the government fully functioning at that point, you know, is, I mean, I don't think we even got to mention that Mod Mothma was the chancellor, right? I mean, there's, there's oh, so yeah. much mystery still around the new Republic at that point. So I would like to see 
you know, and maybe maybe we have to skip a year because the formation technically doesn't actually happen until after the Battle of Jakku, which is a year after Return of the Jedi. So it's not until then that they actually sign the treaty that ends the war and all the Empire basically, you know, heads out to the unknown regions. So, but, you know, how Mothma becomes, you know, take, comes out of the shadows and becomes the Chancellor, um, the idea of why they were thinking of why they moved the Senate out of Coruscant and they started deciding to move it around. It was on Chandrilla at first and ultimately ended up on Hosnian Prime, which is on episode seven. So, you know, you, you, you just have... Even though I know it's uh, I know it's politics and stuff like that, but that stuff I don't know. Part of me just int- it just really draws me in on that, um, especially with the Leia side because you know she she like you said, Martin, she decides to stop her training and yeah. go back to doing that line of line of her her life. So how does she get back into that? And I I just and of course I'm a sucker for anything you know Leia wise. So I, I'd love to see that part of of the of, of her timeline. Well, how about even the Battle of Jakku? Have we ever seen that in any type of live action? It's only in in the books and the comics, right? It's the the game, uh, the Battlefront Two game, and comics yeah. and books. Yeah, no, I mean, not even really comics. I think it was Aftermath books, and then the Battlefront game. But that's it. Yep. Why not bring that to life? It's the totally. next big battle after Endor. Let's bring it to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. you yeah. definitely could do a whole series leading up to that battle. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that would be an ep- excellent. You think about like some of the three episode arcs they've done in animation. You know, you think about like what they did with uh, the end of the uh, Clone Wars season seven. Yes. You know, imagine three. You know, just amazing epic episodes of that battle oh yeah Yeah, i mean you could almost see it you know it's it would be really cool yeah be fun so uh anywhere else anywhere else martin you would go or is it well do we we don't know if we're ever going to get ray poe and finn back i mean if, if those actors do not want to continue with star wars i would love to see a new trilogy with just them but if they don't want to go, then let's continue their stories in animation form. Because I, I love Ray. Ray is right up there with for me with Luke and, and Han and Leia. I, I just I think she was an amazing character. So let's see what she does. Yes, she it looked like she settled in on Tatooine. What's she gonna do with herself? Is she gonna continue training? Is she gonna continue Luke's legacy and try to rebuild? What's gonna happen? I I would love to see more. <laughs> Yeah, like a new Jedi Order kind of series, mm-hmm. and you know, you you have yeah. to wonder is is she going to train Finn? You know, that yeah. would be an excellent thing to introduce in a you know live action to be great. But if they don't, like you said, animated would be, I'd be down for that. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'll just I'll go to the political side again because I'm I'm I, I definitely would rather see a Ray starting the Order again because I think that the Order needs to fully come back this time. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, you, it makes you think because those three movies aren't as spread out as the other trilogies, right? You're, those three movies happen within a year of, of each other. Yeah. And within that year, the entire, not just the Chancellor, the entire Senate was destroyed. The, the military was destroyed with, with Starkiller Base destroying Hosnian Prime. I, I'm just, I, I'm just curious how the galaxy is not in complete disarray. I mean, the first order was somewhat in control, but now that the first order has been destroyed, I mean, who is who is the leader? Like, who is leading the the republic at this point? Um, yeah. That is a huge question, and of course, one that didn't get answered in the movie. You know, because you have basically the entire legacy uh, characters gone. With Leia dying, um, and Mothma had passed away years before, so it's like uh, I, I just have no idea how the state of the galaxy could survive out of that once you know once the First Order has been fully destroyed like that. So um, I'm very interested in that, but I'm, I am more interested in Ray starting this order, starting this academy again, and fully mm-hmm. bringing the Jedi back. I would love to see, and, and I think that. I th- I do think 10, 15, 20 years from now, they will try to do a movie with Daisy Ridley again. I, I just have this feeling. Now, will I be li- alive to see it then? 
I don't know, but hopefully, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I do think at some point they will, they will do something like that. Um, so I guess those are the, yeah, those are technically the three different eras that I thought about, you know, after episode one, after episode six, obviously after episode nine, um, but there are, you know, we're getting those stories, a lot of those stories in other forms right now. But, uh, but just like the Bad Batch, I mean, you can, you can take a story like Kanan's origin or Caleb's origin with Order 66 and tell it in a different way, even though you already had that in the comic. Um, because, you know, right now they've, they've been filling in the gaps between four and five and five and six with comics right now. So you're almost, again, kind of pinning yourself in the corner a little bit with some of these stories. But as we've seen, again, with the cl- with the Bad Batch, th- th- it doesn't seem like it's holding them fully hostage in that they can tell that story again in a different way and somewhat retcon these comics, which is unfortunate, and, and maybe these books. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Aftermath does tell that story of Jakku, the Battle of Jakku, and leading up to that. But, you know, you do an animated series around that you're probably gonna change some of those those details um yeah but i mean i'm assuming cody are you you're pretty okay with what we saw with you know the changing of the caleb dune piece and and the ability to 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 do animated series even though some of the stories maybe have been told yeah i mean i think we talked a little bit about it how you know sometimes it's a shame where the comic actually delved into a little bit more of the character development you know you mentioned Mm -hmm. Uh, it was Commander in the comic. Commander Gray actually has a moment of remembering uh, pre Order sixty six, and he actually has a moment where he kind of you know helps uh, Caleb to escape. Uh, you know, very much like Rex when he's trying to resist yes. Order sixty six kind of thing. Uh, maybe we'll still get something like that in the Bad Batch popping up, just repurposed. So it's a shame when good um, you know writing moments like that would be tossed aside. Because while what we saw in the Bad Batch is great, you know, they really didn't take a lot of time. It was just like, here's Kanan, here's his master, mm-hmm. and boom, you know, now he's on the run. Um, but, you know, that being said, you know, you look at a lot of the other um, franchises that are out there, you know, like, again, Star Wars isn't isn't built like this, but Marvel has years of comics. They uh, take really great stories. They find ways to tweak them, repurpose them, make them better in a lot of yeah. ways. I think that's the best way to do it because like you said, you don't want to write yourself into a corner. You want to give the creator who's working on the animated show, the live action series or the movie enough freedom to not have to, you know, shot for shot, recreate a moment from a comic book that might be more difficult Mm -hmm. than giving him more Liberty. So I'm always of the camp of, you know, let's let writers in the novels and books, you know, novels, comics and whatnot, you know, tell their stories, give them freedom, but then don't let the uh, filmmakers have to necessarily tell that same story. Let them, you know, tweak it if it makes it better. Yeah. Martin, yeah what do you I've, think? I've always argued the same thing. It's the same thing with the DC TV shows because I podcast about them. A, a lot of fans expect the TV shows to follow the exact same stories from the comic books. and But I always say, well, then that's predictable. Yeah, it's yeah. fun to see it come to life, but that's predictable. And, and, Comic books and novels are a different media than live action TV or, or movies. And a lot of times the stuff can't translate to screen very well. So the, it, it's up to the producer and the creators of the, of the movies and TV shows to, to find a way to tell a better story. How will this work for TV? Okay, well, this story, we have to tweak and we have to change this, this reaction. We have to fix this backstory to make it work for TV story because a TV audience is different than a novel reading audience. So... Yeah. I, I always argue that, and I, I think Star Wars is the same thing. If they're releasing stories in the books and the comics, you can't expect it to be directly translated because it's just not going to work. And I think, I, I think if the way Star Wars has put movies and TV as the the ones that trump everything else, then then that's okay. You can you can be a fan of that stuff and be excited that the stories you know might be shown, but just accept that this is going to be a different perspective, a different take on the story that you know. And guess what? You don't know what's going to happen. They might mm-hmm. change something and surprise you. 
and uh, and that so I'm always able to separate it that way. I'm not one of these people that says, "Oh, the books are better. The books are better." I can enjoy both as for for what they are because they're they're two different media that that has to tell a different story. True. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. You know, one thing yeah. I thought of. Um, I'm curious to know. This is probably the last question. Is pretty curious to know your take on this. Do, so, do you remember at the beginning of the first episode of Bad Batch? They, sh- you know, there was that little moment where they, where Tom Kane was narrating. You know, the the what mm-hmm. up, up until now, there were scenes in there. If you remember, there were scenes in there are basically recreated from episode three, right, in animated form. This is just a complete, just interesting question. I'd like to know your thoughts on, but like, would you have been okay actually if they just used the shots from episode three? In or did it have to be an animated form? I was just thinking about that. Like, oh. do you have to take the time because it's canon either way? Why do we have to animate something that's already created? Hmm. Are you talking about like seeing the live action just totally. clips? I mean, I you know, um, would that have yeah. thrown it off a little bit? I don't, you know, I don't know, but it's like because <laughs> because you know they did that with uh, season seven of Clone Wars, right? That you they recreated the 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 scene where Mace Windu is talking about, you know, I sense a plot to to destroy the Jedi or something like that, you know, when from episode three, you know, so it's like they recreated that scene. I kind of get that because they added to it with Ahsoka walking in. But in this, it was literally just retelling what had already happened. And I'm wondering, I was wondering too, I was like, wow, we could have just saw all the shots from episode three. I don't know. Just a side question that I was curious about. I, th- I mean, I kind of like seeing it in the animated style because yeah, you know, while yeah. it's something you've seen, it, it fits, you know, the style. And kind of like you said, Martin, you know, these are different mediums. And so sometimes there are subtleties that are, are changed in them to make them work for this medium. And, you know, like with, the, you know, the Mace examples are a little different, but, you know, especially when you have somebody, you know, speaking, you've got a voice actor who's going to deliver a different line or performance than, you know, Samuel L. Jackson or, you know, when you've got Anakin, you know, it's going to be Matt Lanter instead of Hayden. So yeah. I kind of like them adapting it to the medium that we're in. Mm. Yeah. I, I, either way. I mean, I think it would have been cool it, instead of showing the actual film footage, just animate exactly what we saw already and make it part of the episode. That would have been cool. Like, yeah. You know, here's what we saw in episode three and here's the animated version of it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. That's what yeah. they did. I think the, yeah. I, 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 and I can't remember if it, if it actually happened this way, but Cody, I don't remember. I thought, I thought there was a, there was an episode of rebels where they actually showed film footage whenever there was like this, that there was a scene where there was like a ghostly retelling of for some reason. I think it was Ahsoka when she was kind of doing something. They actually showed like, I think there was like a the part of Geonosis that was in it. I don't know. I, like uh Shakti, you know, scene of Shakti getting killed or something like that. I don't know. I thought I think they did that in that. And then of course, I know for a fact in that episode of uh The World Between Worlds, you heard, you know, scenes from Anakin and it was Hayden Christensen. It was the actual audio from the movies that was playing kind of in that background. So they they have done it a little bit, but um but I get it. I, I do think it worked better as animation form than the because it would have been a little jarring to see live action and then all of a sudden you go to the animated part of it so i I get that so (laughs) all right anyway uh interesting interesting discussion um sooner or later i'm sure we'll see one of those series we just talked about come to fruition so there you go lucasfilm you uh, spare no expense you can have those ideas uh and take those and run with them so Thanks, guys, for offering your opinions on those. Of course, we are Inside the Force. Go to InsideTheForce.com. You can get all these shows on our YouTube channel and on any podcast platform. Go check out the Mandalore podcast. Those things drop every Monday. Uh, We are recording those on Sunday. Uh, Martin does a great job getting feedback back. So please, if you've got some feedback for these Bad Batch episodes, we're covering those as the season goes on. So send those in. 
uh, by by seven seven Eastern on Sundays, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, that works. Yep. Yeah, and we'll get those into the show and uh, talk about your your feedback for the episode. So, yeah, fourteen more episodes to go with the Bad Batch. So we've got a lot of Star Wars to talk about on this show, Mandalore podcast. We got uh, all other shows, council sessions that are coming. We got some in the can that are coming out. So come and check those out. Martin, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, guys. It was a lot of fun. Cody, as always, see you next week. Yep, I'll see you next week. See you around, everybody. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Have a good rest of the week and weekend, and we will see you next week. May the Force be with you.